this video, I'll be introducing you to ArcGIS Story Map, and similar to a dashboard, it is a builder where you piece together component, but different from a dashboard where the user are clicking through the element on a dashboard however they see fit. A story map guides the audience through a narrative and it's actually what I've been using to take you through the process of data to map in the past couple of videos. So what is a story map? Now I have a story map embedded into another story map here and the story map is done by Alan Carroll who is the founder of story maps at Esri. So a story map combines interactive maps with multimedia content and text to tell a story about the world. It's compatible to many different screen sizes, so it's mobile friendly. And it also incorporates a interactive builder, which helps piece together the component of your narrative. So Story Map is compatible with ArcGIS Online because it's hosted on the Esri cloud. Story Map started with classic application where there are different sets of templates that you can choose from. And you'll hear me refer to them as classic Story Map because of that. And now Story Map has changed over the years where it has become a more of a interface where you build your story and you piece components together instead of using templates. So it's relatively new, it came out last year. And Story Map has grown really popular as a way to tell a story. And a lot of organizations and individuals actually are using this to tell stories. There are scenarios where you would use a classic story map and other times you would use a story map where you built a component. Uh, an important question to ask yourself before deciding which one to use is, are you planning to embed it in a website? How are these story maps being consumed? So if you are planning to embed it in a website, I would recommend a classic story map because it is easier to embed a classic story map than the new story map. So this is an example of a story map being embedded inside a website and this story map here was done, this is a size story, but the story map was done by Amy Luff, a journalist at CTV Montreal and she won a digital storytelling award just covering the story with a creative solution which is a story map. So if you're embedding on, on a website, definitely try out classic story maps. Now, if you're telling a story that does not need to be embedded and just needs to be consumed on a monitor or phone or a tablet, use ArcGIS Story Map. So here's an example of a standalone story map, and it is done by Alex Tate, a geographer at National Geographic. And it was a story about his expedition to Mount Everest and he included some 3D interactive map to go with the story and it's very immersive. It gets the attention of the audience member as Alex goes through and tells the story of his expedition. Now one major difference between a story map classic and a story map is that in a classic story map you need to author your map through a map viewer. So if you're going to include a map, it needs to be done through a map viewer first. However, in the new story map, you can add a map through the map viewer and leverage a new mapping interface called the express map. And this is ideally for when you want to create a quick map identifying a location or drawing attention to a location. The new story map has these options to do a quick map, hence the name express map. And it's, a, it's ideal for putting just a point on a map and sh showing your audience member the location. With ArcGIS story map being the new kid on the block, it is still worthwhile to talk about the classic story map because many people are embedding their story map in websites that have very wide margins. So there are seven templates of layout for the classic story map and they are similar to configurable application where it guides you through how to put the application together. So here I have a story map tour and it is essentially a template where 
your audience member are being guided through a sequence of photos and videos that are linked to a point on a map. So here is a story map tour done by the city of Brampton to give the audience member a historical tour through the city. Next we have the story map journal. And like the name suggests, it's, it's a journal where it goes more in depth to the narrative. And as you scroll through the left panel here, the right panel where it's called the main stage, it changes either with a map or other types of rich media. So if I click on a different entry of a journal, it changes the content on the right hand side. So that's what a story map journal template is. Next we have the story map cascade. And this is very popular because it it is often used to replace a PowerPoint slide, but it's very it's a very immersive template and it lets the audience member combine the text and media map component. And this is what I mean by immersive, right? It takes you through the story and things changes in the background. Next we have the story map series and they're known for their tabs on the top of the story map. So we have here a number tab showing the 10 most damaging hurricanes in the US history. But there are also different types of tab, for example, the text tab, kind of like your browser having multiple tabs. And then you have the accordion style, which allows a user to click on a number. And as you click the number, the text would expand to show more context to the story. And the main stage here on the right would have a different rich media or graphic or map being displayed. The next one we have is a story map shortlist. And the story map shortlist is a combination of tab series story map and a map tour. So if I click on different categories, I have these points filtered on the left here. And it shows you what these filters of these points are on the map here. Next we have the story map swipe and spyglass and this is now we did a demo on how to build a story map swipe. Here's an example of what a story map spyglass is. So it's the same thing with swipe and spyglass. You are comparing two different entities. Uh, it's usually a change over time and this here the spyglass is a pretty cool application because it's simply really fun to play around with and discover the changes between the layers you have on your map or in this case your imagery on the map. Finally we have the story map basic and this is simply showcasing a map. These templates are easy to use as I demoed before with a story map swipe and it's simply a template where there are a lot of guidance to how to put and piece together your map. Now in the new story map, it is more of a builder with the ability to piece together components to tell your story. So here is a good diagram showing the anatomy of a story map. You have a title page and different components that follows after the title page to showcase your story. Now there are several things that I do want to touch on in the new story map. I don't want to demo anything or build anything to showcase this. There are many how-to videos that I will provide if you are interested, but I do want to highlight some key features in the new story map. The reason why the ArcGIS story map is considered a builder is because you as the creator of the story map gets to interactively add components and piece the story together. The interaction comes in a form of a menu that looks something like this, and you can add a text uh, you can add separator to separate maybe either a text or a multimedia in the story as well as picking out the layout you want to convey that story. For each text, a simple highlight of the word can give you many options to customize the text, whether it's changing it to a bullet point or hyperlinked. There are many options for you to choose from. 
You also have the flexibility to change the alignment of how your image or your multimedia appears in the story. And finally, you get to use the new express map. And let me quickly show you that in action. Here I have the story map that is featured in this video in the edit mode. And I can simply hover over to the plus sign and select the component I want to add on the story map. For example, I want to add a map and I want to show you what an express map is. So I can pick a map in my ArcGIS Online account or I can create an express map. And to add a point on an express map, you simply need to search based on the address. So here I'm going to search for the Esri Toronto office, Concord Place, and it's located in North York, Toronto, so let me click on that. And after locating me to that address, here we have the Esri Canada office. I'm going to add it to map. And I can center the map a bit better, maybe have the point right beside the label. I'll put it here. I can also add text to it. So this is my office. I can add really cool customization to my text. So actually let's just give it a background. And there's also ability to draw arrows, draw lines, add numbers. There's a lot of capability just to customize a map. It's nothing like the map viewer. So once I hit done, you'll see this express map being placed on the story map. And the neat thing about this is that if I didn't want my map to be here, I can reorder it by simply dragging it and dropping it to change the order of the components within my story map. Now, like classic story map with the variety of templates, these templates are considered style in the new ArcGIS story map, and you can pick them from the menu we saw earlier. They are called immersive blocks on the menu, and you can add multiple of them in one story map. So there are different types of layout. We have the sidecar dock panel, and this is the panel you're actually looking at. So this is the layout you're looking at. We also have the sidecar floating panel. So instead of having a left panel, the panel is floating amongst your rich media. Next, we have the slideshow. And like the title say for this layout, it's a slideshow similar to a slideshow of pictures where you have rich media, whether it's picture, video, or maps. It's being circulated in a sequence with the option to add text and the user gets to click on the next arrow button to view the story. Now the next one is called the swipe layout and this is a new feature that just came out June 2020. We had the options to now have a swipe function to compare between maps or even images. Finally we have the guided tour and the guided tour is simply like the classic story map tour where it takes you from location to location and you have pictures and text to accompany you as you go through the tour. So let me quickly show you how that is like. So I actually got the screen grab from a story map called Purpose and Penguins and it takes you through a journey of these explorers looking through and observing penguins. So it's really cool feature, very immersive and very, uh, notice how quick it is, right? It's fast, it's slick, and it's very nice to look at. So it really helps grab the audience attention. Finally, we have map actions. And let me just show you what map action is. It's simply adding interaction to your map that are typically used to highlight a particular area or filtering out data set or even showing change over time. So you can see that quick action when you click on a button and it zooms you to a particular area. As you can see, there are many overlaps between the classic story map and the new story map. And eventually the goal is to have all that features from the classic story map be available in the new story map. Now that concludes the final video of introduction to ArcGIS Online. 
and the links of these story maps are for you to access anytime, anywhere, and they're all provided in a collection of story maps. So this being the last video of this series, I would like to thank everyone for learning with me on how to bring raw data to a map and then transforming that map into an application where you can share with everyone. Now here are some additional resources as well as blog sites to follow for the latest updates on tips and tricks. And if you have a Twitter account, please follow Esri Canada and my personal handle at Mapping Ming for the latest update on cool visualization or cool updates to the software. Also, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, I am there as well. Now, if you created some amazing maps and you want to share it with me or have a discussion with me on it, mention me on Twitter and I'll definitely respond. And I look forward to your work. So please share. Talk to you then.